In this video, we're going to look at rendering with different resolutions in V-Ray in SketchUp Pro 2022. I have here a small architectural folly model, and I've turned on my shadows from my daylighting system. And let's make some renderings of this model. I'm going to open my asset editor in my V-Ray for SketchUp window, close all of these tabs in my settings and open only the render output. So render output gives us the image width and height that we will get when we render in as measured in pixels. And it is often tied to the ratio between these two numbers. So the ratio of 800 to 450 is 16 to 9, or often it's called 16-9 ratio. When we render in our frame buffer, I'm getting 800 pixels across, 450 pixels high. That is directly the number of pixels that I'm going to get in my rendered image. And when I zoom in using my scroll wheel, I can begin to see that when I get close enough, I can see those pixels and there's a definitive amount of detail that will be captured at any given resolution. If I wanted to increase my resolution, I can select one of these fields and type in, let's say, 1200. And when I hit enter, this ratio is going to be preserved. So the other number, in this case, my height, is going to change to be proportional in a 16-9 relationship to my 1200. And when I render now and zoom in, I can still see pixels eventually, but I'm capturing a little more detail. I've got half again as many pixels in each dimension. Now something to note is the relationship of this object to the edge of the frame is different than the relationship of this object to the edge of my frame in, in my scene. It's a little challenging to see at 16.9. Let's make it more dramatic. I'm going to pick an aspect ratio that is square. When I set this to square, it's going to reset these numbers so that they're at the same aspect ratio or at the new aspect ratio. And when I render now, the edge of this ground is almost at the edge of my frame. I have a square frame now, and that is the extent of my rendering. However, in my SketchUp interface, it's misleading because I see more of the edge of the, um, the scene beyond that, that point. And the challenge here is when we begin to compose rendered views that are very specific in their composition, we want to be able to see in our viewport exactly what we're going to be, be rendering. And that's where this notion of a safe frame comes in. And the term safe frame originates in uh, broadcast design, uh, where depending upon the hardware television set or monitor that was being used, the very edge of it would sometimes get cut off and that it wasn't safe to put important content at the edge of the frame. So the safe frame was a way of showing designers, artists, technicians, where certain allowances were in place to allow for the safe placement of critical content. And it has evolved to mean more when I click on this now, where is the edge of my frame going to be when I render? So now I've got this square frame shown. And if I render, I can see that I'm getting exactly the same relationship inside the safe frame. So this edge here where I have dark on the outside and light on the inside, that is the edge of my safe frame. And if I were to scroll in, let's say, and change my view, to something more like that and render, I'm getting exactly that view in my model. So safe frame, once we start rendering, is incredibly important and might be something that you want to keep on persistently so that you're never misled by what you're seeing in the model. If you're, let's say, doing a lot of model building, you might want to turn it off so that you're not distracted by it. So we've looked at the widescreen ratio and the square ratio. There, you can match the viewport if you wanted, and you could also give it at your own custom ratio. If I said I want my width to be three times or four times as wide as my height, and I wanted a super widescreen 
ratio, I can obtain that like so. And likewise, if I wanted to invert that, and let's say I wanted one to three, I wanted a very, very vertical ratio. I could also obtain that. So I have quite a bit of flexibility depending upon what my image is being used for, whether it's going to be going into um, a broadcast kind of media, in which case I want to be very careful to adhere to standards that work for broadcast, or whether I'm going to be printing it and putting it on a board for a presentation. Um, so it's a often overlooked way of specifying uh, a rendered ratio that, that is appropriate to what we're trying to communicate in our model. I'm going to go back to a square ratio and fit my model generally within that ratio and look at if this is a 675 pixel rendering, what happens if I increase these significantly? Let's go to 4,000 pixels. When I'm looking at it scaled out in my frame buffer, it doesn't look tremendously different. However, I may notice now at the very top of my frame buffer, I see a percentage of um, what I'm looking at. So I am looking at this at 12 and a half percent. It's telling me the full image is actually 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. So let's zoom in. And as I zoom in, I can see the image is noisy, but I can zoom in far more and we'll, we'll find ways of getting rid of this noise, but I'm getting an awful lot more detail and in my image. So while it may look the same, when I'm further away, if I were to be printing this or using this in a project, that resolution could be very instrumental in making this feel more concrete. Maybe it's not safe to use concrete because that suggests materiality, but more, more specific, more tangible, less like a digital raster image. So use your width and height to your advantage, use your aspect ratio to your advantage, and make sure you're intentionally setting them as appropriate in your projects at all times.